What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters. Sean, Zankoshu, Kregan, Kaiju Paladin Gabriel, Raven Fighter 91, Jasic, Bobby Dolphins 1972, Jimmy McFickus, Saracian, Sean McLaughlin, Samuel Ward, Sir Flame, Caitlin Harrington Robinson, Kaiser Sani, Son of Nemesis, Justin Jensen, Stephen Sharp, Ayla Ann, OXL, The Elemental Viper, Brony Time, Corey Costello, Wolf Jaeger, Carl Lee, Lewis H., Milo Man, and Tyler Johnson. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producer, The Anime Hybrid. Thank you all very much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. When people talk about Star Wars Episode One, they usually just want to talk shit. I love Darth Maul, probably because he didn't have to say a bunch of George Lucas's lines. Oh, what's happening? Oh my, oh, what is this? I'm so happy, if you can't tell. I just enjoyed episode one so much. Steven Seagal is Where? nowhere. <sighs> Thank he's God. Dude, trust me, he's too fat right now to hide anywhere. You don't know. I mean, shadows can be bulged. Doesn't he live in Florida? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. He was a cop somewhere. Have you New ever Orleans. seen the show? Yeah, yeah, he was a cop down in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, dude, look, that show was so. Fun. It was. You see, the thing is, <laughs> I forgot about it until <gasps> just now. Dude, that's I, the first thing I think of every time I hear about Steven Seagal now is the fact that he was, he was a, a cop. cop and he had a show. <laughs> <where> <laughs> like, the scene where he's like had a bulletproof vest on and the, I don't think they had a size that could fit him properly. It just looked like he was trying to wear a uh, three-year-old's like, um, what is it? Like water preserve vest, life jacket thing. Like, yeah. So it, it was fuck. It was awful so there's been some interesting stuff about steven seagal number one okay he is an aikido master aikido is as i've heard some people say the dane cook of martial arts reasonably priced furniture what ikea right oh ikea i get you okay no no that's swedish Uh, swedish martial arts gotcha yeah yeah, yeah, the assembly hand movements. It's like Kung Fu. But, yeah, Steven Seagal has had a hell of a career. That's the best way I'm going to put it. I respect him in the form that he he got over. I'm never going to hurt. I'm never going to hate on somebody for making money, but I am going to just like outright say it. I think the dude is <clears throat> not a legit martial artist. I mean... <laughs> If I were to meet him, I wouldn't be terrified. Because the dude got choked out by a 70-year-old man and pissed himself. Really? Gene LaBelle. Gene LaBelle, the dude who taught Bruce Lee judo. The dude who taught Bruce Lee judo and jiu-jitsu got a, was on set. He was a stuntman. He was on set with Steven Seagal. And Steven said, yeah, I've got this move that no matter what, whenever I do it, people always let go. And Gene was like, okay, all right. So, so whatever and steven's like you don't believe me he's like steven i don't have any dog in this fight i'm just here to film stuff and he's like go ahead gene put me in a head put me in a chokehold this is gene labelle the first american red belt in jujitsu um gene labelle's like all right steven he gets him in a chokehold and he says all right steven let me know when you're ready and steven's like go ahead so he wrenches it up wrenches up the chokehold and steven comes back and just like karate chops him like straighten the balls and then Gene's just like, and Gene just doesn't let go. And then he looks down, Seagal's out. And then he lays him down on the ground. And then he started, he's like, anybody else smell that? Oh, he pissed himself. Shit. Uh, sorry about that. But anyway, uh, yeah, Gene LaBelle is one of the most legit martial artists out there. The dude, the dude is like, Ronda Rousey loves the guy because she pretty much calls him Uncle Gene because he's been such a big part of her life and mm-hmm. helped her get to the bronze medal in judo, uh, much like her mother as well. But <clears throat> the thing is, Steven Seagal, he wants to portray himself in films like he's this unstoppable killing machine. I remember the movie Hard to Kill. A dude <laughs> literally ran up behind him with a knife in hand, 
grabbed Steven Seagal on the arm and stood there for a solid two to three seconds, not moving, not doing anything, prone as got, prone as anything. All of a sudden, Kelly LeBrock turns around and screams, Look out! And then Steven Seagal turns around and kicks the shit out of the guy after he stood there for a solid two to three seconds, not moving like a fucking statue. I'm sorry, dude. But that's... But people look at your films and laugh at you. Like, there's very few people who take you seriously. I I'm like it. I like some of his movies. No, but some of them I'm are huge, entertaining. I'm a big fan of Cheese, man. I, I do find comedic value in it, too. But, like... yeah. I don't know. I'm just nostalgic, as you all know. Well, the the yeah. only film by that that stars him, I was okay with, was the first Under Siege. Under Siege, yeah, yeah, because it had Tommy Lee Jones, Gary Busey, Eric Elaniak. It had a great cast, and to me, he was just like, oh, so he's driving the plot forward. Okay, so interesting, but I much would rather be watching Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> you know, ham it up like he he can. Yeah, he's awesome. He is, but <clears throat> overall, though. I I can't stay I can't take Steven Seagal seriously whenever he talks about like he was talking about mixed martial arts he was just like you know that kick Anderson Silva used to knock out Vitor Belfort like a straight kick to the face he's like I taught him that the night before you know I just wanted to let him did he know really that. say that yes he did he legit was just like you know I pulled Anderson <laughs> aside the, the night before and I showed him you know how to throw that kick properly you know he he seemed like he needed instruction this is Anderson mm-hmm. Silva like. Muay Thai God in Brazil, dude, John like one of the best strikers to roast ever. This man, <laughs> John. I hope John does. I'm sure. He I hope will. he does. Let's get to it. This is this is John Tron, Steven Seagal, certified tough guy. Here we go. Before we start today's video, okay, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor. And you know who that sponsor is? Okay, you're not going to believe this. That's Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play dark fantasy RPG game available to play on your phone, tablet, and computer. With cross-platform capabilities, you can switch from playing on your phone to a computer with ease. And brand new to Raid is the Tag Team Arena. Tag Arena is the next level of competitive PvP battles, where you face off in a best of three 4v4 battles. Whichever team wins two matches wins the series. And as you progress through the campaign, you'll collect new and unique champions and gear, so you can customize your team the way you like to play. If you're a competitive player, you can earn special rewards if you finish high in the rankings. So, what are you waiting for, okay? Go to my description, click the link, and download Raid Shadow Legends today. Ow. If you're a new player, you'll get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, 5 mystery shards, 1 energy <coughs> refill, 1 day XP boost, 1 clan boss key, and a free champion. Execution. He did all this those This champion backwards. is super strong, and like I said, you'll get him completely free by signing up with my link below. You'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Okay. This guy, okay? Steven oh. Seagal. Uh, I don't know how he's he looks been. looks like a tan the places walrus. he's been and accomplished what he's accomplished. I always just knew him as a 90s action movie star with the likes of Jean-Claude Van Damme and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, beating people up. Being awesome. Oh, Bruce. Oh. Putting asses in seats at the movie theater. Generally not being batshit crazy afterwards. Mm. You still fine? Yes, I do. You still dangerous? But Steven Seagal could not manage that last bit, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, here you have it. The many sides of this fragmented man. May we try to piece him back together like Humpty Dumpty. He is kind of an egg guy, if I'm being honest. He, 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 he is very egg-shaped right now. So Steven Seagal is trained in an art called Aikido, uh, or so he says. It's basically an art where you just... You just flip a guy. You just you just throw a guy. That's Basically, it. That's what it is. That's it. Dude, I'd be careful if I were you. That's a dangerous man. <laughs> see? See? Yeah. Uh, but I'd be remiss if yeah. I didn't point out the central aspect of Aikido, in which uh, that it is a, a fakey-fake, not-real bullshit... Uh, martial art. Ironically, if you look at it, most of the real skill here comes from the people pretending they're falling. Yes! See, it pretty much obeys the same principle as Judo. You're using your opponent's momentum against them, and that's why it's very important in Judo for you, as a competitor, going against someone else who knows Judo, to not do too much motion, because if you do too much motion, they will use that against you, and thus you will throw yourself off by exerting too much. Aikido is just, I stand there and look awesome. 
I barely move my wrists, and you and you do all the you do all the work. It's pretty much like you taking bumps all the time, mm-hmm. making someone else look good. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's basically it. Exposing the business. So uh, this guy. that's probably a good sign of things to come. <laughs> oh my god. Is this going to be about his music? So Aikido is essentially the pyramid star, huh? scheme it, of martial arts. Yeah. Well, what yes. about Steven Seagal's the, the one where uh, you musician. go to a you go to a demonstration, they get you all hyped, being like, "Dude, this seems awesome. This seems like something I definitely need in on." And they'll be like, "You can come learn to do this for a low, low price of way too much fucking money." Like, yeah, yeah. Month, you, know? you get there and it's just dudes doing rolls while another dude stands there. He's I guarantee like, you, there won't be any refund on your first lesson. No, there. absolutely not, dude. That's that's the thing. I mean, well, that's why I I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a little while. Or if you're those gullible, dudes are legit. If you're gullible enough, and they always put you with dudes that actually like react to your moves and stuff. Like, oh my gosh! They show. Like you could end up going through a whole class thinking you're some kind of badass until you <laughs> actually like let it go to your head, and then you get your ass literally handed to you in an actual situation. So. Joe Rogan talked about this, uh, like in in spades on his podcast. He brought on people like Boss Rutten. Brought brought on people like legit, bl- like black belts and jujitsu and karate and other forms of striking, and honestly, every single one of them looks at what Steven Seagal does is just like this dude's a snake oil salesman. He literally is just like paid to stand there and look awesome and just throw and just pretend he's throwing people. That's it, and and nobody in the martial arts community takes him seriously. And there's a and there's a reporter who like worships like Steven Seagal. His name's Ariel Helwani. And anytime Ariel Helwani brings, he calls him Sensei Seagal. He doesn't call him Mister Seagal or Steven Seagal. He always calls him Sensei Seagal. And I'm just like, Ariel, <laughs> shut the fuck up. You you skinny little he's a mark. You skinny little bald headed like like Canadian shithead. He's a mark. Yeah, he is. He's a mark for Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's not gonna fuck you, dude. I'm sorry. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Well, now you gonna have to see. <laughs> I got seven hundred dollar, baby. Ain't you remember? Don't me from me. Make this bell tell you. It's quite easy to do soul singing. You know what I'm saying? Before I was born. <laughs> You gotta watch out, Scott What the fuck? It's like started soulful, but ended with a threat. It was like, you better watch your back, literally. Oh my god! That made me feel so uncomfortable, dude. But he was having a stroke. My family are from Vladivostok in Belarus and you know I'm a Russian Mongol and I'm Russian. My father was a Russian Mongol, so these people are Russian Mongols. That's right, it's real. That's Vladimir Putin shaking hands with Steven Seagal. How does it even happen? Was Vladimir Putin just like a like a fan of Under Siege or something? Quite some time ago. I like to think Vladimir Putin just has no idea who Steven Seagal is. He's just like, who is this oval shaped man? Foreign minister to Switzerland. Okay. Did he? Uh, is that a real translation? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> there. This is just them parodying oh. it. I have no idea, but they. But Putin is smart enough to th- to know. I better not speak shittily of this guy in Russian around me because he may have someone with him that knows how to speak Russian and yeah. he'll translate it and thus, you know, try and say... Yeah. Russia? Or, or wait a minute. This guy was... Wasn't he like a James Bond type motherfucker for Russia? Who? Vladimir Putin before he became like a politician. He was. He was, he was a very well-regarded... He was like a secret agent, right? Yes. He worked for the KGB. He could probably, whip, he could probably whip Steven Seagal's No, I've ass, seen dude. Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin knows how to throw down. Dude. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, he does legit judo and samba. Yeah, I could see... He's, legit. I've seen him grill a bunch of other people before. So. Oh, I wouldn't... Mm. He I probably wouldn't did call him an egg-shaped man. I probably did. I probably. I don't know. <laughs> First, I'd like to congratulate you on this occasion. Mr. Putin wants you to know that uh, he thought you were the foreign minister to Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> and he was mistaken, but he's going to go ahead with it anyway. Congratulations, Mr. Seagal. Uh, 
Yeah. My Jesus, act, yeah. act like you're at least a little happy to see him, Vlad. I mean, I know, I know you're not in reality. Nobody would be, but at least act happy. I mean, for Christ's sake. So He's whoa, giving what's him with a the Russian, fucking gnarly like, thumbnail. Is he him, like, a, a you're gonna Russian go meet whoa. the president. Of, whoa, 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 whoa! That's whoa, a coke whoa. nail. <laughs> whoa! What's with the fucking gnarly thumbnail? It's like yellow. Oh no! Yeah, he's man. been scooping, just like just scooping coke and. Huh! <gasps> I'm badass. I'm badass. <laughs> That's it. That's literally it. That's literally it. He gets enough coke in his system. He thinks he's the fucking king of the world. Probably. Just that transition. Whoa! I'm a badass. <laughs> that fucking got me, dude. <laughs> oh. You're going to go and meet the, the president of, of Russia and you, you, you come with the fucking Crypt Keeper fingers? Talent, you talent. going to be like up close on television? What the fuck? You know Vlad's like looking at like his gnarly thumbnail like, <laughs> I'm going to have to shake that hand. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weak. So happy to see him again. That's all. It's really been a pleasure. By the way, just saying, huge fan of your annexation of Crimea. You are a great big fat man. Round, I thought was so strong. Strong, <laughs> slim man. No, you are like a Russian potato. But believe it or not, kind of. Vlad is actually not the only Eastern Bloc president that Steven Seagal has graced with his presence, as seen here when he visited the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, at his official residence in Minsk. Because this, you can't make it up, really. You can't make it up. Welcome. <laughs> That's his son, I think. <laughs> Shaving carrots. White House. All right, you go to Downing Street, they're going to give you a cup of coffee and a cake. Not so in Belarus, all right? You go to the Minsk Palace, all right, they're going to shred you a couple carrots live. Shaving carrots. Look at this Helium. man. How does he look so out of place everywhere he is? <laughs> look at that posture, all right? That posture asserts, I don't know where I am. I want the money. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, go easy with the fuck. Did, did you just skip lunch? How hungry were you? У нас природа не позволяет их Oh my god. <laughs> he looks absolutely lost. He's like Mhm. 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 time for the watermelons. <laughs> Dimitri, good boy. Bring Steven the watermelon. Nice. Check that thing out, right? We don't got much of a GDP, but check that out. That's some soil we got in my backyard. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, I keep, I keep like, it? You're going to be I, in my I, belly right. tonight. Cool. Look at All right. Yeah, that's your thing. <laughs> Watermelon's <laughs> It's a bit fucking weird, but... Oh, oh here yes! We go. Here we go, baby! But he's not only yes. Russian, okay? He apparently had a brief stint as a cop uh, or something on the New Mexico border. Uh, I don't know what made him qualified for such a position, but somebody apparently thought it a good idea to hire him, uh, which is why we are now going to be treated well, to a video titled Jack the Cop. <clears throat> and I quote, Everyone forgets Steven that. Seagal Shaquille O'Neal's a cop. Americans how to stop school shooters using guns and martial arts. I good luck stopping a school shooter using martial arts, I'm just saying. Stop, boy! Oh! Oh! Holy shit! That was a high caliber round! America's war on gun crime is being fought on many fronts. But now the world's most powerful country has a new weapon. Yes, all oh action my hero, God. Steven Seagal. Oh! <laughs> what? What's with this news reporting? The siege star took time out from the bright lights of Hollywood to train posse volunteers in Arizona. Posse volunteers? What, what do you mean volunteers? I thought these were cops. Better question, what the fuck is a posse volunteer? The Maricopa County Sheriff's That's, Office yeah. volunteer posse consists of non-compensated positions made up of people from all walks of life who want to assist law enforcement as a way to give back to their community? Pretty much uh, an deput old deputization system. Yeah. The all or nothing box, they used to call it. It was nothing but a bunch of badges in a box. They'd throw down and just be like, you're all deputized, put on a badge. That's literally it. Dumb and <clears throat> yep, exactly. 
Now, is school shootings really the proper domain for the volunteer contingent of society? Shouldn't the most absolutely highly trained veteran forces be taking on these kinds of tasks? And shouldn't Steven Seagal always have literally nothing to do with it? Yeah, you're not doctors and lawyers, you're cops right now. You take that Hippocratic Oath, you scrunch it up, put it in the trash. You're here to shoot the child, but only the child with the weapon. And wow. You somebody get down on the ground. They gotta do it. If they don't do it, you gotta make them comply. Look, for every second that goes by, you could be losing children. I, I like how Steven Seagal, you could see him just for a moment there calculating the optics of talking about mounds of dead kids. For every second that passes, we're gonna be losing, losing children. children. Losing that, children. That's good, right? It's good for the TV. The most precious asset we have as a society and as human beings is our children. Which is why I've come here to this <laughs> But he's wow. a big don't get me wrong. Uh, you boy of 12 with a shotgun, <laughs> unhand your weapon. Don't make me do this. <laughs> Son of a bitch. If they think they can keep extorting the children of this community with 10 cent price hikes on SpongeBob Pops, but they're dead wrong. <laughs> it turns out, pretty cool guys actually. But not everyone agrees. Swearing on the, the cops to pull up on John dressed like Arizona that near a playground in an ice cream Ohio. truck any second. Yeah. Just be like, hey, let me talk to you. <laughs> Could you imagine? It was actually, it's like cops pull up. Come here, I want to talk to you. Could you imagine if it was actually like Steven Seagal pulling up to him? He'd just be like, what are you doing here? And then all of a sudden, John's just like, what are you doing here? <laughs> They just go back and forth. And Steven doesn't know that John's good. parodying him. He's like, what's your name? My name's Steven. It's a good name. But you didn't answer my question. What are you doing here? It's like, come on. Dude. <laughs> to protect the children. Oh, my God. That's the main mission. They can say whatever they want. Oh. But I'm not going to stop. Black belt is psychic. John. Who would disagree with that? <laughs> How long has, has Steven Seagal been standing behind me? Why is Steven Seagal standing behind me? If that weren't enough, uh, he had his own series called Steven Seagal Lawman. Oh my God. Here I've we go. I've been working as an officer in Jefferson Parish for two decades mm -hmm. under most people's radar, said Seagal in premiere episode, The Way of the Gun. The Way of the Gun. Okay. Once a year, I remember that, I remember that to movie. qualify with firearms in order to use their pistol on duty. And next week is Alex's test. See how it goes right where I want it? Yes, sir. Right there. Now, most people don't know this, but when the bullets are in the gun, okay, watch closely. Nice eagle. Did you see that? Most people don't know that. If I don't pass weapons qualification. I'm afraid Mr. Skull's gonna hurt me. Really, uh, he's a scary man, he's an intimidating man. He's also, if I, I could use a turn of phrase, off his fucking rocker. <laughs> I'm trying to pass out some of the secrets that have made me a master shooter. I don't wanna just help Alex pass this test, but I want him to be a better marksman for life. Well, that's kind of the idea, isn't it? Kind of. Both in the same hole, buddy. Good luck, chap. <laughs> Not through the bullet hole. It's a failed test. Nice try. Oh! Next guess shot. who's buying beer tonight, boy? Damn. Damn. I guess it's me. I guess I'm buying beer. Damn. That's Steven Seagal's whole racket, isn't it? He just, he just tells someone to do something impossible. They can't do it. And then he goes, hey, oh, look who's paying my mortgage this month. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese for all right there. Cheese for all right there. Cheese for all right there. He knows what he's doing. And he knows how to put lead on target. Lead on target. Oh, fuck's sake, my dude. God. You know, being a lifelong practitioner of martial arts, I try to teach everyone not to fight the recoil of the weapon, but more to become one with the weapon and let it be an extension of their body. Which is exactly why, uh, in case you were wondering, my hands look like this, okay? When they said firearm, that I didn't know they meant it goatee, literally. Man. Yeah, no, but I do miss <laughs> yeah, eating food normally. Damn it, dude. Oh. <laughs> After what I've seen today, he could take a gnat off a fly's ass. <laughs> Wait. That's a that's very weird. That's a weird analogy. Yeah. That also I noticed something about the gun Steven's firing versus what the cop is firing. Steven I here to teach him not to fight is the firing weapon. 
a 22 marksman rifle. That thing is meant for precision shooting, not stopping power like what cops uh, use. Yeah, cops like Luger. Well, it looked like the cop was you. Well, no, no, that's not a Luger. That's a that I think that's a, I think that's a that's a persona mm, invoker. Kind of, yeah. It kind of looks like that. Wow. But but the 22 marksman pistol that they have right there, I'm not sure if that. I don't know. It looks like a Luger. It's a Luger style because of the barrel, because of the barrel shape and the hand and the grip. But there's multiple, like the one that, that Zach always goes to, uh, Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wesson has a, a great marksman rifle or marksman pistol. <clears throat> that's, that looks like that. Although theirs most more recently have a, have like a, a perforate or perforated uh, barrels. So that, uh, so that, uh, the uh, uh, so that the ejection of the gases can actually go out the side of the barrel, and thus it actually lowers the velocity of the round. Hmm. It's very. I mean, Luger. Not exactly. Oh no, no, it's very similar. Yeah. It's very, like I said, like the barrel, like the barrel and grip, they're pretty much dead on. But Zach kept showing me. Uh, but the thing is, Steven's using that. There is no kick to those things. Yeah. No kick to a twenty two. Yeah. Heck, my five year old nephew <clears throat> can fire a twenty two straight. But the cop is using a standard issue nine millimeter Beretta. That is a much bigger round and kicks a whole hell of a lot more. I mean, Jesus. After what I've seen today, he could take a gnat off a fly's ass. Please stop. Just, just, just say shoot the shoot the fleas off of a deer's ass. I, she, say, just, say something like that. Or guy shoot, should just or, like stop oh, saying. Or I don't know, shoot the uh, shoot the slugs off a off a croc's back or gator's oh. back. I'm sorry, that's that's Louisiana. <clears throat> you got the Asian. He shoots really kind of well. Less. Yeah, you're not doing he this anymore. It. You're doing this. Okay, we've seen a lot of this kind of movement, right? Now we're seeing a bit more. Oh. From the time you started till the time we finished, I felt like he learned something. Good. See, I believe that was the point, I think. So, good. All right, okay. So, we've heard about Steven Seagal, the... All of those things. What well, about Steven Seagal, the man? You know, the person, the human being behind it all. We always ask, what is Steven today? But we never ask, how is Steven today? A weirdo. Right? So, let's watch an interview uh, with the man himself. Uh, it's an interview he did with The Voice. Uh, should get a little accurate representation of who he is, right? Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome to The Voice Versus. Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Chevelle. I'm glad you said your own name, mate, because I wasn't going to be able to pronounce it. So sit back and strap yourselves in for the longest interview ever conducted with Steven Seagal. Before he got distracted and left, okay? We had him in that chair for like 26 minutes straight. Steven Seagal, thanks for joining me on The Voice Versus. It's an absolute pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did it come to be Aikido that was your chosen art? Well, actually, I started studying karate at a very young age. I, um... Don't yeah. hurt yourself, dude, all right? We don't want smoke coming out of those ears. This is your longest interview ever. We're only about 15 seconds in. <clears throat> sort of lied about my age and got a job washing dishes at a uh, restaurant. I think it was called the Wagon Wheel or something like that. Oh. And um, there was a, uh, a cook there. Because back oh. then in America, you didn't really have dojos around. I was working at this restaurant. Uh, don't remember the name of it. There was a cook there. But back then, you didn't really have dojos. Right. Understood, Steven. Understood. They were all sort of underground or quietly teaching. Okay, back then it wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't exactly legal. A bit taboo. You go on the street, you say the words kung fu, all of a sudden you're in the back of a SWAT van. One of the cooks there was a guy called Sakamoto Sensei, and he was a Shotokan Wait, guy and an Okinawan Shorin uh, guy. In short, this guy was a guy. <laughs> He saw that when Sakama, I was washing okay. the dishes. First off, is his name like is his last name Sensei? Because is it 
just Sakamoto or Sakamoto Sensei? Like, you're, you're casting out, like, weird signals here, Steven. I mean, Sensei's usually, like, you know, the teacher, the instructor, but, I mean, was his last name literally Sensei? Is that is that what you're telling us? I, I don't get that. No. Is it moving around that, that I moved very fast? Hey, that, that guy back one there. Name, probably. Is he, he was never probably. on a more familiar basis with him. Oh, he's just a dishwasher. No. How exactly do you wash a dish in a fashion that will impress a martial arts master? I think he's making it up and uh, ripping it all off from the plot of uh, the Karate Kid, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> we demonstrated karate at this place that they had, which was a theme park, like a Japanese theme park. You know, it was like a regular theme park, you know, like with roller coasters, except it was Japanese. He did an Aikido demonstration and Warner Brothers was blown away and boom, Steven Seagal became a movie star. Is that true? And if not, I, how did it I happen? hate to admit it, that is true. Okay. You met Bruce Lee. True Tell James me about your experiences with Bruce and what was he like and how did you get on with him? I, I thought Bruce was a really great guy, a really cool guy. And I thought James Coburn was a great guy too and I'm really sorry they're all gone. And when Brandon was killed like that, um, they called me a few minutes after it happened. It was in Carolina somewhere. They called me in the middle of the night. Yes, yeah, Charlotte. You'd think it'd be more like, you yeah, Steven, Steven, but it was, it was a... We think that he's dead, and but what, the what guy you... shot a blank gun at him. Uh, how could he be dead? Steven, we need to talk to you, dude, okay? We shot, like, a gun, a blank gun at, at Brandon Lee, and now he's, like, bleeding from the stomach and dying, dude. Why is he dying? What do we do? No, we didn't call an ambulance. We're calling you, dude. I said, you will find a projectile in him. You'll find Jesus. a bullet in him. And they said, that can't be. You're crazy. Uh, Steve... It wasn't, though. It wasn't a bullet. It was literally... It was a cap lodged in the fucking gun right yeah that's it it was it, <clears> it got caught in the rifling from one of the previous times it was shot and when they fired another blank through it it literally shaved off the rest of the way and just popped right out and hit brandon lee i mean it's it's an unfortunate thing it really is but but you didn't need to call Ste i guarantee you steven seagal like got a call from some of the producers saying yeah um, unfortunately brandon lee has passed away and he's yeah. like hamming it up right now to just say yeah, yeah, you'll find a projectile in him, and, you know, it's like, I guarantee you, he was probably already dead by the time that they... No, but, like, <laughs> no shit. He, you'll find a projectile in him. R really? What? God, God, that's so stupid. Even, what are you gonna tell me? Pigs are flying next, okay? All we did was shoot a gun at him. We're gonna fight a bullet. Why did they even call you instead of the paramedics? And I said, you will find a bullet in him. And they called me in the morning. And they said, you're amazing. And I said, why? And they said, he said Brandon's dead. It was a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking, you rock, dude. I can go through the whole story on what really happened, which most people don't know, but. I could go on all day telling about bullets and my friend. You don't want to hear that. But do you? Because I'll, I mean, I'll keep going. Who's the most legitimate Hollywood tough guy, in your opinion? When you say tough guy, do you mean martial artist or just tough I mean, guy? I mean, you can tell just like right out the gate. Yeah. He's like, uh, it's Steven Seagal, but like I thought you knew that. So like, are you asking <laughs> for me to confirm it, Steven Seagal? Or are you really curious? Because it's pretty obvious. I mean, Steven, for real, if he was on the street and there was a situation, you wanted this Hollywood guy by your side because he could defend himself. Fucking hell, look at this guy's shit-eating grin. <laughs> Michael Jai White. Can I laugh in your face? Can I laugh? Michael Jai White oh, would yeah. rip your ass in half, bro. Laugh in your face? Really? 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 Yes. Michael Jai White is legit. Thoughts on Jean-Claude Van Damme? Can I laugh in your face? Oh my god, Steven Seagal is such a dickhead. He is. Chuck Norris? I mean, Chuck is in his mid-70s. He's probably 76 years old. I don't think anyone with a straight-on hairline just has the 70. authority to be going around calling it was like in his late 50s, early oh, 60s. Oh, that's Chuck Norris, all right? Last I seen him, he was using a walker. So, I mean, I don't really want to get into, on film anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who's a tough guy. Do I think Michael is a tough guy? No. Do I think he's a martial artist? No. Do I think Jean-Claude's a tough guy or a martial artist? No. Only one guy left who could be the tough guy. <laughs> response on the other end it was just I'm your <laughs> yes 
right now, if I was to look around this room, would I find an arm of some sort that you've brought with you? Yes. Thank you for joining us on the show today, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Guy. That's... <laughs> Don't drop the action. Good. Good job, John. <laughs> that was my favorite outro of any YouTube video I believe I've ever watched. That's it's up there, dude. I didn't see any scrolling names. <laughs> I didn't see anything trying to be sold or any uh, reminder of uh, any kind. Uh, it just was. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that interview just solidified what a D-bag he is. That was so stupid. Oh, yeah. Y yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, Joe Rogan told the story about when Gene LaBelle told him the story. Mm -hmm. So it's a second-hand reference, but Gene LaBelle did document it in a book. So, <clears throat> and Steven Seagal has neither confirmed nor denied uh, it happening, so it's pretty much confirmation it did happen. Yeah. It's like... I don't want to talk about it. Like, the dude does not clarify that Michael J. White is literally one of the, like, in Hollywood, he's one of the, like, toughest martial artists out there. Legit. <clears throat> Same thing with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jean-Claude Van Damme is in his 50s, and he is still taking care of himself and looks great. Freak and Steven Seagal looks like a, a tanned, leathered, fat, chubby piece of dough that just didn't cure properly. And it just sat there and grew a beard and started spouting off Not insults. even a beard, dude. That's a goatee. And yeah. it's like a terrible one at that. Yeah. Just for men to death. Like, God. it's so awful. It looks like he's got caterpillars marching around his fucking mouth. Just... <laughs> Could you imagine if, like, one day he's just like, Stephen, and they're just like, Stephen, tell us, what inspired you to grow a goatee? Goatee? Oh, shit. <laughs> My toilet brush. <laughs> yeah, sorry, those are caterpillars. But, yeah, honestly, it's... Joe, Joe Rogan does a great Gene LaBelle impression, too, because Gene has a voice like this, you know, he's a, you know, old school kind of kind of guy. Uh, I think Gene LaBelle's like 90 years old now, and he could still kick my ass. That's just People how bad People that can grapple, dude. Dude, savage. legit. Like, legit grapplers. Holy hell. But, yeah, that was... um. Good Lord, Steven Seagal. What a character. Yeah, absolutely. Only in America. Yep. Only in America will you have a character like that. Well, and John Tron. Well, and John Tron. John Tron's, dude, his impersonation and that goatee where it was just like, it looked like smeared, just like makeup or something. Yeah, they took like face. mascara and was just like, all right, that's he, good. He looks hilarious like that. I, I'll tell you, one of the funniest Steven Seagal impressions I've ever seen was Will Sasso off Mad TV. Oh, yeah. Because whenever shit wasn't going right, he's just like, you don't believe in me. You know, by you not believing in me, I'm not able to do it right. I'm sorry, Steven. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> just snaps your neck. It's like, all right, does everyone here believe? Okay. I'm going to run across the air, and I'm going to kick the guy in the face. It's like, Steven... You don't have wires. I told you, I don't need wires. I'm Steven Seagal. Okay, here we go. Runs, jumps, falls off. And he's like, okay, it didn't work that time. Mr. Director, you don't believe in me? It's like, Steven, you need wires. I don't need wires. I'm Steven Seagal. <laughs> Snaps his neck. It's like, Matt I'm the TV director was now. the shit, dude. Matt TV in their peak days, dude. They had, uh, you know, they had Will Sasso, Phil Lamar. They had, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, she, she was in Kim Possible. I forget the... A lot of good shit. Yeah, dude. Nicole Sullivan, that was her name. They had some hilarious people. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, good lord. Uh, we need to get out of here before... I think Steven Seagal is going to try and, like, ram a vehicle through before our window. Before we become under siege. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we suffer and we have some bad exit wounds. Mm. That was a good movie. I, I like that one. It's probably the only Steven Seagal movie I like. It's because it had DMX in it. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. I'm Nick. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace out. Jesus Christ.